We are kicking off with Raw, and Liv Morgan shocked the entire world at the conclusion of last week's show for more than just retaining her women's world title against Becky Lynch in a steel cage. After the match, Morgan locked eyes with Dominic Mysterio, who inadvertently helped her win the match and followed up by locking lips with Dirty Dom to his surprise. On this week's Raw, Morgan began by reflecting on her revenge tour and finally addressed the infamous kiss with Dominic Mysterio last week, which prompted him to come out. Dominic issued a warning to Morgan from Rhea Ripley, only for Liv to brush it off and make another advance toward him, but this time, it didn't look like Dom was resisting anything. It took Finn Balor's interruption to stop things going further, and later backstage, Finn had to talk sense into Dominic and make him realize the consequences of what he's doing. Dominic simply said that he is giving Rhea Ripley her space, with Balor continuing to try to be a father figure to him, and when Damian Priest asked, Balor said things had been sorted. But what are your thoughts on Liv Morgan making advances towards Dominic Mysterio and Dominic seemingly being on board with these advances? Sound off in the comments. The first of two LWO vs Judgment Day matches took place next, when Dragon Lee and Finn Balor went to battle, and though JD McDonough was at ringside, nobody from LWO was there. Balor immediately took control and wrestled Lee to the mat, but he only kept the high flyer grounded temporarily, and Lee made a comeback after we returned from a commercial break. Lee and Balor are both excellent at their styles, and are versatile to work with anyone, so they had no issues finding their groove and hitting some nice spots. Interference from McDonough provided a distraction so Carlito could trip Lee on the top rope, but Carlito and McDonough were taken out by the high flyer shortly after. Balor recovered during that time and hit the coup de grace for the win, and as the Judgment Day attacked Lee, Rey Mysterio and Braun Strowman came out to make the save. This was all done to set up more for later in the show, so all of the interference wasn't a negative in this case. During Raw, Damian Priest told Carlito to ask for a match against Braun Strowman, and even with attempted interference from JD McDonough and Finn Balor, the big man didn't go down. Strowman nailed Carlito with the reverse chokeslam to get the win, but was attacked by JD McDonough with a steel chair after the match. The rest of the Judgment Day joined in on the attack, and while Liv Morgan was at ringside, Finn Balor stopped her getting too close to Dominic Mysterio. Morgan didn't leave empty-handed though, as she took Mysterio's arm sling before making her way to the back, as the women's world champ continues to do whatever she wants on Raw. In the main event of Raw, Damian Priest faced Rey Mysterio, and despite a valiant effort by the Hall of Famer, it was the World Heavyweight Champion who got the win. After the match, Drew McIntyre arrived and took out the Judgment Day, but Priest was the one standing tall after sending his upcoming challenger through a table. The fans chanted holy shit as Raw went off the air with Priest, Balor, McDonough, and Carlito standing tall over the Scottish Warrior. Now AEW has one of the most diverse and robust rosters in wrestling, but there are only so many spots available on TV. In recent weeks, multiple names have parted ways with AEW, including Jake Hager, Mark Henry, and Arn Anderson, and now these departures have been made official. If you visit the AEW roster page, you'll find that Mark Henry, Arn Anderson, and Jake Hager have all been removed, as has the profile of Paige Van Zant, who left AEW earlier this year. Mark Henry has since appeared for MLW, while Arn Anderson has said he wishes to focus on his son Brock's career, and more has come to light about Jake Hager's situation. Hager had been a part of AEW since 2019, and had once been part of the inner circle, but in recent years, little had been done with the former WWE World Champion. According to Fightful Select sources in AEW, there had been no plans to use Hager in the run-up to his exit from AEW, so both sides thought it was best if he left. Hager announced his retirement from MMA last year, but Fightful reports that at least one promotion is interested in using him, so we may see him back in the cage. As for Mark Henry, he is expected to appear more for MLW after his surprise appearance at Battle Riot 6, but there's no word on when that will be. Ultimately, time will tell what the future holds for those who have left All Elite Wrestling, but don't expect to see this quartet of names on any Elite show anymore. Now it was during the end of Bray Wyatt's Becoming Immortal documentary that fans got their first glimpse at the return of Uncle Howdy, and those teases have grown in recent months. Since the Raw after WrestleMania 40, multiple glitches and QR codes have teased the return of Uncle Howdy, and WWE.com recently felt Howdy's effect. 
Another QR code redirected fans to a 90s-style website with an image resembling one used in the recent QR code campaign simply captioned hello as fans have been deciphering clues. On this week's Raw, a QR code flashed at the end of the Sheamus vs. Ludwig Kaiser match and when scanned, led fans to a web page with multiple options. The option on the top played a video with a series of messages and images flashing that were seen to be that of the Firefly Funhouse and ended with a hooded woman thought to be Sister Abigail. Other pages featured some new and old clues that have been previously shown, but much like the first one, the last link showed a blurred image of WWE Raw talk hosts Megan Morant and Sam Roberts. This clue had a message reading, See you tonight, as WWE continues to effectively build anticipation for what promises to be an exciting storyline with Uncle Howdy and a stable. One option on the website was an audio clip which, played backwards, had the message, The cave will be no more. The end of all things. A massacre is coming. Run and hide. Run and hide. But what do you make to Uncle Howdy's return, as portrayed by Bo Dallas? How do you think it'll affect WWE storylines? Sound off down in the comments. The last time WWE fans saw Alexa Bliss, it was at the 2023 Royal Rumble event, and since then, Bliss has become a mom and fans are eagerly awaiting her return. In one of her latest Instagram stories, Bliss shared a selfie that showed her with a nose bandage, leading to questions about a possible injury that could delay her comeback. Despite this, her humor remained unscathed, and she thanked her makeup artist for helping her look really pretty, regardless of the situation, and she later tweeted, Haha, I'm fine, thanks. Bliss intends to return to WWE programming, though a specific return date has yet to be announced, and she's not expected to be a part of the Uncle Howdy mystery. Whatever this nasal issue is, it seems that it won't be a big problem for Bliss, who remains to be one of WWE's most talked about stars, despite her lengthy hiatus. As we reported earlier this week, former WWE and WCW valet Missy Hyatt recently alleged that Vince McMahon tried to force himself on her in another shocking claim against the billionaire. This is the latest claim against McMahon, who is dealing with a federal probe and Janelle Grant's lawsuit, and Hyatt has revealed that she told Grant's legal team of her claim. Speaking with WSI, Hyatt said that Grant was a poor girl for going through what is alleged, and said that she contacted Grant's lawyers and shared her own situation with McMahon. An assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York has officially entered the Grant vs. WWE McMahon Laurinaitis case, showing how serious this situation is. Whether Hyatt files litigation against McMahon, we'll have to see, but clearly McMahon's departure from WWE back in January has not marked the end of these matters. More from Raw as Braun Breaker continued to share his frustrations with Adam Pearce over Braun being snubbed from the recent King of the Ring tournament. In response, Breaker was booked into a match with Ricochet, who slapped Braun to get things going and used his speed to evade some of the strikes of the former NXT champion. With that said, Ricochet was still selling his injured ribs, which were hurt by a previous attack by Braun, and one wouldn't have been surprised if this ended up being a squash match. Instead, Ricochet was given plenty of opportunity to shine in a solid match that made Breaker look better on the main roster than he has in previous appearances. After an impressive Frankensteiner, Breaker cut Ricochet in half with a spear for the win, and post-match, his assault on the 35-year-old was stopped by Ilya Dragunov. Considering that Dragunov was another one of the men Breaker attacked last week, it seemed an obvious move to put these two new rivals against each other. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out, as while Dragunov has been earning his way to the top, Breaker has been focused on taking what he feels belongs to him. The two-time NXT champion has been on a tear, and fans can expect this to continue in the following weeks in what should be a great program with the Mad Dragon. Right now, Becky Lynch is perhaps the biggest free agent on the wrestling market after her contract with WWE expired on June 1st and she parted ways with the company. Naturally, this has prompted fans to wonder about her future in the industry, and while we don't know what she'll do next, we know she'll be paid very well. Fightful Select reports that Lynch is expected to receive groundbreaking contract offers and possibly the most lucrative deals ever extended to a female wrestler. While speculation is running rampant about Lynch's future, including a possible move to AEW, concrete details remain scarce, leaving fans to await her decision. Those in WWE expect Lynch to return one day, and prior to leaving, Lynch had told those in WWE that she didn't plan on joining AEW imminently. 
Lynch has now officially parted ways with WWE, but another contract is also set to expire, as Angel Garza's deal with WWE is due to conclude on August 1st. This was first reported by Lucha Libre Online and later confirmed by Fightful Select, and the former 24-7 champion has been a part of Legado del Fantasma as of late. Sources within WWE reveal that negotiations have been ongoing between the two parties, with an offer currently on the table from WWE, but it remains to be seen if he'll sign. But what do you think of this whole situation? What do you think Lynch should do next? Should Angel Garza re-sign with WWE? Share your views in the comments section down below. On last week's WWE NXT, Sexy Red appeared for the gold brand and was all over the show, and at one point had a twerk that NXT commentator Booker T appreciated. Booker even suggested that Red and Lola Vice have a twerk off, and this comment has drawn the ire of fellow WWE Hall of Famer Medusa. Taking to social media, Medusa said that if Booker did indeed say a twerk off should happen, then it's cringy coming from a married man, and followed up with a shrugging emoji. Booker would not make such a comment about any of the men who appeared on last week's NXT, and we'll have to see if he responds to Medusa's criticism of this comment. Jay Uso appeared in the crowd during this week's Raw, much to the delight of those in attendance, and he reflected on the events that have transpired since last summer. From being part of the bloodline to embarking on his own journey, Jay thanked the fans and then declared what's to come, stating that he'll be in the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match. With significant momentum behind him, fans eagerly anticipate Jay Uso's potential breakthrough as main event Jay has his sights set on a guaranteed world title match. After Jay's promo hyping Money in the Bank, AOP took on The New Day, which came following a segment earlier in the show featuring Karrion Cross. That segment saw Cross state that Xavier Woods wouldn't need to follow Kofi Kingston for much longer, but Woods just brushed it off and walked away. Shockingly, this ended up being an absolute squash. Kingston being distracted by Cross led to AOP getting a very quick win in perhaps the most dominant AOP we've seen in years. One has to think that there's better ideas for the New Day than to split them up, and unless this leads to Big E's return to save the group, this feud with the Final Testament might not be the best idea. Sami Zayn was on Raw to talk about his issues with the Alpha Academy, and while he called out Chad Gable, only Otis, Akira Tozawa, and Maxine Dupree came out. They delivered a message from Gable saying he could turn Alpha Academy against him, and Zayn agreed to give Gable a title shot with their match set for Clash of the Castle. Zayn also addressed the students and asked if they've had enough of Gable yet, and Chad attacked Zayn from behind and ordered Otis to take Sammy out, but he refused. After Maxine literally begged Gable on her knees to stop, he tried to kick her out until Otis got in his face and Zayn recovered, but Gable sent him into Otis, who knocked Maxine off the apron. Otis picked up Zayn and slammed him before storming out of the ring to carry Tozawa and Maxine away, and this did a good job setting up Otis to get a massive pop when he finally turns on Gable. Clearly, there are issues in Alpha Academy, and as Otis continues to tease turning on Chad, the Olympian may already have some replacements in mind. During a backstage segment featuring Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill, Gable could be seen speaking to the Creed brothers who, like him, have a background in amateur wrestling. It was reported some time ago that the plan was for the Creeds to align with Gable, and judging by this image, this could be happening sooner rather than later. Last week's WWE NXT was full of surprises, including the debut of Ethan Page and the arrival of Jordan Grace, both of which WWE were able to keep a secret before the show. Fightful Select reports that according to one NXT insider, the tapings have been way more secretive than usual as of late, as the gold brand wants fans to be wowed by what they see. WWE used the names of Alexa Bliss and Lita to throw fans off the scent about Jordan Grace, and we'll have to see what other huge plans are being kept a secret right now. Ahead of our first match of the evening, Sheamus was preparing for war with Ludwig Kaiser, only to be attacked by the German during his entrance. Kaiser attacked from behind with a chop block, and Raw went to break with officials checking on Sheamus' knee, and we returned to the match already in progress. Sheamus was able to recover and took control after shrugging off several chops that left his chest with deep red welts in this battle of finesse versus brute strength. Sheamus is the bruiser who overpowers most people, while Kaiser focuses on more technical wrestling, and fans got to see a bit of both styles on display. 
There wasn't a ton of variety in what we saw, but it was a hard-fought contest that allowed Kaiser to look good on his own without Gunther being the main attraction. Sheamus did a lot of selling, and Kaiser was able to get the pin after tripping Sheamus on the middle turnbuckle in a simple but fun match between two talented individuals. In a matchup of a veteran and a newcomer, Natalia took on recent call-up Kiana James, who faked an injury not long into the match, so the ref had Natalia backed off. Natalia would make her pay for this subterfuge with a running clothesline, and this match was a clear indication of the importance of experience in wrestling. James is a great athlete, but her weaknesses were more evident against the skilled Natalia, but that didn't stop Kiana from getting a relatively quick win over the boat. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair were invited to Raw this week by Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, and to no one's surprise, they showed up when Bianca and Jade were in the ring. Adam Pearce came out to book a WWE Women's Tag Team title match, and Baszler and Belair started for their teams and went back and forth fighting for control until Cargill tagged in. As it looked like Belair was going to get the win with the KOD, Isla Dawn and Alba fire attacked to cause a DQ in the match that had little to it, but at least set up a potential triple threat. We've got news from TNA Wrestling now, as the company recently parted ways with Lou D'Angeli, who had been running the promotion's live events, in quite the blow to the roster. D'Angeli was said to be well-respected in TNA and had helped in multiple roles, and now an ally of his has also left the company. In the F4W Online Daily Update, Dave Meltzer reported that Lou D'Angeli's assistant in live event promotion and marketing, Lily Aranello, was also let go as part of cost-saving measures. It was noted that while cost-cutting isn't necessarily a bad thing, TNA seems to be cutting to the bone, and in some instances is actually cutting the proverbial bone to save money. David Sahadi has also been let go after serving as TNA's creative director and had a long-standing history with TNA in addition to working with WWE in the 90s until 2003. Clearly, TNA is cutting back costs, but will these measures to save money lead to an overall detriment to the product fans watch on TV? Time will tell. We've got some sad news to report now as independent wrestler Jermaine Robinson, better known as Dirty Money, has died at the age of 44. Robinson had been recovering from a double quadriceps tear and suddenly passed away in his North Virginia home last weekend and leaves behind his wife Melissa and two sons. Robinson mainly worked in the indie circuit on the East Coast in promotions like MCW, VCW, MATW, and more, and we'd like to extend our condolences to his family at this sad time. Now, Jeff Hardy has had a challenging time in AEW and in February was sidelined with a broken nose injury during a match with Sammy Guevara. Hardy was cleared to wrestle again last month but hasn't returned to the ring, and this situation may have impacted the former world champion's contract with AEW. On Fightful Select's Q&A, it was said that Jeff could see significant time added onto his contract to make up for the time that he has been unable to compete over the years. Jeff and Matt Hardy's contracts were originally set to expire at the same time, but that didn't happen, as Matt has since left AEW and is currently appearing for TNA. As for Jeff, there's still plenty of questions about his future in the ring, but for the time being, don't expect the charismatic enigma in any other promotion. Right now, Ricochet is the reigning WWE Speed Champion, but it was recently reported that his time with WWE could be coming to an end very soon. After signing a five-year deal in 2019, Ricochet's contract will expire this year, and Fightful Select reports that the one and only has attracted interest from outside WWE. AEW International Champion Will Ospreay recently said he hopes to face Ricochet again after the duo had a series of exceptional matches from 2016 to 2018. Ultimately, it'll be Ricochet's decision as to where he goes next, but if he does exit WWE when his contract expires, he likely won't be out of a job for very long. Not too long ago, the Motor City Machine Guns ended their time with TNA Wrestling, and while it was said at the time that they were talking with AEW, they've yet to reach a deal. Speaking to CBS Sports, Tony Khan was asked about the guns and said he'd love to have them back as the duo appeared at the infamous All Out pay-per-view in 2022. Khan is confident that Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin would help elevate AEW's tag team division, and the pair certainly did that in the early days of TNA. Both men are former TNA World Champions, and have made clear they're not done in the ring, and it remains to be seen if the Motor City Machine Guns end up being All Elite. 
And we're ending with Ring of Honor as Marina Shafir has been absent from the ring for a long time, but now fans of her will get to see Shafir back very soon. According to Fightful Select, Marina Shafir is set to return to action on ROH TV this week, and interestingly, she's also been spotted backstage at recent AEW shows.